Hello everybody, it's Adam here, coming back to you from Houdini Apprentice version 13 with a uh, tutorial on how to make an animated crack grow through a ground plane. This is the final result here. We're going to have some user controls which allow us to open the crack open or make it shallow in depth. We want like that, and over time it will grow across the screen. So let's go ahead and get started. File New, Discard, go to Scene View and click Rewind. Go ahead and control click on the L system, spacebar G to get close, and I'm going to drop into Shop for a moment here, open the tree, and drop two mantra surfaces out into our pouch palette work area here. The first one will be called crevice, the second one will be called ground, and we'll make the ground color, I don't know, kind of happy green, and the crevice color can be a charcoal gray. Close up the tree, go back to obj, and then double click to dive inside, spacebar H, to home the navigation system. The L system comes with some presets and we're going to use the animated crack preset. Now if you've never used it, the animated crack, um, when you first activate it, it just disappears. So we're going to turn on the real-time flag and then move over here and press play. We'll mouse wheel out a bit and we can see that this preset just simply adds a meandering point to a curve over time. And that's what's going to drive our animation. So let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to choose 7 for my random seed. And for the value of the step size, let's set that to 0 0.25. We're going to go ahead and add a transform. Click Transform, visualize it so we're looking through it. Set the Rotate X to negative 90. And we'll go ahead and move our timeline to the end here so that we can see our crack in our viewport. So we've rotated it 90 degrees so that it's now laying flat on the ground, which is kind of where we want it. Let's go ahead and add a for each. We need to process each point in this curve on each frame. So we'll double click to go in the loop and we'll right click and add a point. We'll visualize the point here and we will add color. Now it gets populated with these global variables so we're going to delete the channels to clear all that out. We're going to type our own expression. 1.0 minus dollar sign PT divided by open parenthesis dollar sign NPT minus one close parenthesis. At this point you'll notice in the viewport that your line is now changing from red to black and it doesn't matter how long the line is. The first part will always be red and the last part will be black and everything in between is just a fade between those colors. That's exactly what we're going to leverage to cause our crack to be wider on one side and smaller on the other as it grows through the scene. So let's drop down a null and we'll go ahead and rename this to user controls. I'm going to bring up the color palette and color it purple. It's what I use for parameters and we'll go up to the parameter interface for this null and edit that. We're going to add two floats to our interface. The first one will be named crevice underscore width. We'll activate the range and set it in a range of 0 to 1. The second one will be called crevice depth or crevice underscore depth. It will be in the range of 1 to 10 and we'll go to 
channels here and we'll set the default to five. We, we don't want any zeros to appear in our interface here. So we'll select Corevus width and change its default to 0 0.37. Apply, accept. Okay, let's move on here. The next thing we want to do is add a poly wire. So let's go ahead, drop down a poly wire, visualize it so we're looking through it. And we notice we've lost our color. We've lost our color because the for each is not processing correctly. So let's revisit that. Click on the for each. We need to remember to set, instead of for each group, because there's zero groups, so zero color was transferred, instead we're going to um, choose the primitive or point, and now we can see, yes, we are getting red to black on our line. So the next step is to um, wire in our, our user controls here. And this is pretty easy to do. This is the reason why we created them as parameters. So we can just right click, copy parameter, then we click on polywire, we're going to right click, paste copied relative references, and that will overwrite any text in this field. So if you start typing and then paste, you'll lose what you've typed. So go ahead and paste, then type what you need. Dollar sign CR times. So we're fetching that color red value we calculated, and we're multiplying it against this user value of 0 0.37. And sure enough, we can now increase our width or make it narrow. So we'll drop down a transform here. And this will be the control or the mechanism that is going to hold or manipulate our second parameter, crevice depth. We'll copy that parameter, go to the second transform, right click in the Y scale, paste copied relative reference, and it jumps up. So indeed, we do have some control here. We can scale the depth. I think we want to chop the top off. So we, we want to... Uh, right click and type clip. We'll visualize through that and we will do the primitives below the plane and the plane it's talking about is the plane of this widget that appears. It's the clip widget and what it's doing is it's an infinite plane in the XZ direction and it's only XZ because that's where the default is and that's where our uh, Lind and L system appeared as well. So we've got this crevice now. If we look down in there, it looks okay, but we've got a, some jumbles going on. So let's see if we can't clean that up a bit. Before we move on, though, we want to take care of our, this color. We're going to type a trib and choose attribute and simply delete the color information from our mesh. We type capital C, lower D, visualize the attribute, and it's now gray. We want to remove it because we're going to add materials later. And if we have this red color in here, it will get multiplied against our material. and It may not look right, or it may not work at all. So we've got this gray. We're going to right click, drop down a divide. And this should allow us to remove shared edges. Let's go ahead and visualize the divide. Now what the divide has done is it's removed these shared edges and given us essentially a 2D version of what we're after. And uh, if we drag through we can see, yep, it's definitely growing. We're going to turn on the numbers and inspect what's really happened though a little bit closer. See, if we look at this, we've got like a 149, then a 1, then a 3, then a 16, 23. So some numbers are being jumbled here, and we want to reorder those. So we're going to use a sort, type sort, enter. We'll visualize that, and we'll go ahead and we want to sort by vertex order. So now we can see that the numbers start low, work their way around in sequential order, and end up as a large number here. The 
step we need to do now is to open this curve up so we can add some more points because basically we need to kind of draw a, a plane around this and come back and connect. So we want to go from zero over here, over here, and connect to this 150. So in order to do that, we need to open up the ends of this curve. And we'll just type the ends node, drop it down, visualize that, and we'll change close U to open. And as soon as we open it up, we can see this is no longer connected, and it's no longer a face anymore. It's essentially a hole, which is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and drop down and add. We'll visualize that, and we're going to add four points to represent the corners of our plane. Turn the checkboxes on. And I'm going to press spacebar 2 for this operation, so I want to do this in the uh, uh, top viewport and we might as well move to the end. See that? We need to make sure we're getting the whole thing covered by these points. Now I've never really used the add before with these check boxes and adding points but this black blob appears here and each one of these it's four points stacked on top of one another so you just click and drag out and you get this point. I'm going to click and drag out the next one and move it up here and then click and drag out the next one move it over here and then click and drag this one and move it out over here. Let's switch to the polygon tab choose by group and activate closed. Now it looks like we got some anomalies here going on but let's go ahead and press spacebar 1. That's just kind of our top view. It looks like everything's actually working here, and I'm going to move in a little closer here. Let's get in. And maybe I'll even just drop in a camera at this point. New camera. We'll set the Y to 360, so I get a 16 by 9 view. We'll lock the camera to view. It looks like it is locked. And uh, I'm not going to worry too much about this open end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use camera framing to solve that problem. We'll just say we never see that. And that should be fine. And if we review our animation, it just kind of jumps up from the bottom, takes off. We may, maybe we want it over here like this. So that's going to be our animation. So the next step really, we'll go back into our L system, is to take this row here and kind of move it to the side and then we're going to drop down a merge. I think we'll also drop down a material uh, control C control V we'll have a second copy and we'll just go ahead and drop our add into this side drop our attribute into this side and merge these two together and we'll visualize it and sure enough, we're getting, uh, I'm going to unlock my camera here, <clears throat> we're getting geometry in the shape of our crevice that's growing over time. So we're real close to where we want to be. Let's go ahead and pick our materials now. We've got um, the crevice on this side, except this side here is the ground. Except that. And we'll look through our camera. We'll jump up to object control add an environment light and we will choose ambient occlusion give it nine samples switch to render view choose objcam one and click render to start our session of auto updates and there it is but we do have some problems we looks like we got jumping lines or normals uh, we got this bevel going on and this is what I wanted to fix. I wanted to get past this problem here so that we get a nice clean render from edge to this direct color of the crevice. So we're going to, at the after the merge here, drop down a facet. We'll visualize the facet and activate unique points. And that's fixed up a lot there. That has done a pretty good job of getting us where we want to be. but I still don't like this edge here. And this edge appeared, if we take a look over here in our tree, we'll do a little inspecting. 
if we middle click on ends, we'll notice we have one primitive. And that would be the curve that we were adding points to, right? So if we look at add here and middle click on that, I'm in the middle of an operation, I'm breaking out of that. Let's middle click on add. We have two primitives. Two primitives here. So we're just simply going to delete one of those. So we'll right click, type del, choose delete, and nothing happens because we haven't picked one of the groups. So let's go ahead and just arbitrarily, we have two, we'll pick zero, and that's what we want. So we've deleted the first primitive, which was the line. Now if we wanted to see the line, we could delete the plane by choosing group one. And now you can see there's the lip or the line. And we could probably still refine this and do something with it, but for this tutorial I'm just going to remove it. And this is the look we're going for. And I think that's it. I'm just going to wrap this up here. I think if we pop back to our users' controls here, let's um, verify they work. Select this node and maybe uh, open up our width a bit. It does indeed get wider. I can make it shallow if I want. I can make it appear over time. And I think that's pretty cool. It's a, it's a nice little rig. I can make this guy real narrow so you could animate this so it could start out real spidery, you know. Um, work its way through and then break open and become super deep and we can't even see the bottom, right? So that's it. That's the cracked line animated to appear through a plane. Uh, hope you take the time to play with the nodes because it really is fun. Once you get the hang of uh, how to stack this stuff up in Houdini, you just keep coming back for more. So with that, I'm out.